Hello everyone and welcome back to Explain 11. In this video, I am happy to present a Payware Concorde I recently acquired. This is by Kolimata. It is an early access plane, which means it's not featured complete yet. They're still working on it, uh, but it is available for, as they put it, friendly users. And I consider myself one of those because I previously got Kolimata's FA-18 and attempted to fly it around the world because I was so fond of it. And that didn't go so well right at the end where I uh, was coaxed into doing some uh, some ill-advised maneuvers during a Twitch stream. But anyway, uh, yes, I was confident that there would be good quality coming from this particular plane. And it looks very nice so far. It is heavy on the frames. Um, we are also in JFK and I have some very intense uh, scenery of Manhattan around here somewhere. So yeah, I mean, unfortunately, until we get uh, well over the ocean, we're not going to be getting proper frame rates regardless of what plane I fly. But you can see the quality of the texture. We'll get a better look of it in flight as well. Uh, but uh, I guess we might as well take a quick look around. It's a little bit close to that light pole, unfortunately. That just happens to be this gate. I don't know why. Anyway, inside uh, looks very good. And if you saw my video with the the freeware one, this is quite a bit different. And it, of course, allows you to do a cold start with it. And we will be doing that. The back end, the instrument panel for the for the engineer is not quite complete with the dials, but the switches are. The switches are all, as far as I can tell, functional. And of course, the Concorde is fabulously complica complicated, so uh, we are going to have to do some work with it. It comes with this uh, graphic user interface. And again, not everything is done yet. See this in development stuff, but what's done is pretty darn good. We've got uh, the seat seating arrangement and uh, we can reduce passengers, increase passengers, mass. Uh, it shows you a range estimate. We're going to try and fly this from uh, New York to London, actually. We're going that a ways. And I'll see if I can manage the fuel properly for that. And, of course, this isn't the first time I've flown a Concorde. And I have flown this Concorde already once to try it out. And uh, hopefully I can do a good job of it. But it's got a lot of information. Uh, the trim, uh, use of the trim tanks, for instance, we can see here. I should probably top off the fuel if we're going to go across the Atlantic. And uh, the engine status, center of gravity, uh, doors and such. So yeah, I'm fairly pleased by its current situation. But the main thing that we need right now is the checklists. And we've got the internal check, sorry, external checks. The safety check I'll temporarily um, skip. So uh, first of all, ground power on. And I'm pretty sure that's on the engineer panel. We've got these buttons in the bottom left that allows us to easily jump from one place to another. But it is so complicated in here. I need uh, sort of, uh, there is a cold and dark startup guide that I'm referring to to see where all the buttons are and actually for the ground power we activate it in the menu that we had just seen the GUI so we need to access in aircraft doors and ground and GPU ground power available okay so now we have the ground power which also comes with the ground air supply so now we can turn on the main batteries and those are, this will take some practice here, bat, on, on, very good. Equipment bay cooling panel, check and set. Equipment bay cooling over here. Um, when it says check and set, it's uh, in the cold and dark startup guide, it says must the equipment bay must be cooled containing many electrical power consuming systems, so I assume we turn those on for now. I think that's probably best. That's normal, on, on. I don't know about, we can tur keep off the standby, I suppose. Oxygen panel, that seems important, but oddly enough, the oxygen panel is down by the right here and very hard to access. Uh, that's no fault of 
the model, but oh, well, see that switch. Uh, the the cover is separate from the. So I'm gonna get down here and off to the side and try and. There we go. <laughs> You'd think that that'd be easier. Now, I don't think I need to. I guess we could toggle these a little bit, but I think as long as we turn it on, we should be safe. Okay, drain mast heaters. So those are on the pilot's overhead. There it is, drain mast heaters. Um, I think up is off and down is on. We probably want those on. Okay. Uh, so INS 1... And two and three need to be aligned. That's back with the with the engineer. That says align. Maybe we should put it on standby first. Okay, so and then this one. There's three of them. Uh, I don't know. Last time I tried this, it didn't work very well. I mean, I know these alignments take like ten minutes, but. Last time I left them on for 10 minutes and they didn't do squat. So it's possible that that wasn't implemented, but then again, I've messed this up on other planes before, like the 737, 757. <laughs> I, I keep messing up the INS thing. Anyway, uh, air data computer. Air data computers are back. Okay, back there. On, on. So now we get to do the seatbelt lights. Normally they're up here somewhere. But there are a lot of things that aren't normal about the Concorde. For instance, the Concorde doesn't have an APU. It doesn't have an auxiliary power unit. So we have to start the engine's part. Uh, otherwise we don't have the ground supply. Oh, there's the no smoking and fasten seatbelt. Sorry odd angle. It's right up there, right in the back. All right, next. Okay, master circuit breakers checked. We need to shove in all of these. Got the auto stabilization two systems, electric trim two systems, and artificial fuel two systems. There's power flight control circuits for the elevons. I don't think there's any need to fix those. All right, anti-stall systems on. Rad ints is here. That is on rad, and it is also there for the co-pilot. Yes. All of the instrument transfer stuff is fine. Altimeters. Let's get back to the pilot seat. Well, let's just set this to zero. Audio panel calm on. So, uh... I think that should be fine. Okay. Nav radio set. And I don't have any. I don't want to talk to anybody. We're fine. <laughs> um, parking brakes are back there. Better view of them. Uh, it's. Oh, it was in park. Oh, you almost got there. Oh gosh darn it. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right. So now we need to set the throttle masters up here. Here, to uh, they they need to be on main. So they seem to be already on main. Off, they light up. That's typical. Uh, things usually light up when they're in the wrong position. And nav lights. Sorry, I'm upside down, but nav on. I'm got turn anti collision on. Ground hydraulics check out. Uh, yell off. Well, it's yellow and it's all off as far as I can see. 
so that seems fine. Fuel heaters. If you were wondering whether we would actually be using the engineer panel, yes, a lot actually. The engineer does quite a lot. Engine recirculation, uh, recirculation valves, recirculation valves, there we go. Shut. Mm, second day air doors. Uh, we are going to be taking off with reheat, so we're setting them to auto. Batteries on normal. I think we already did that, right? Let me just check. Everything seems to be flicked to normal. So it seems good to me. Alright, next. INS check ready light on. See, now this this is what I have a problem with. The the light. Well, maybe I should have pressed test. But that says fuel vent. <laughs> This this is uh, computer three. See now it doesn't have the light up for it already. Maybe that's just not implemented. Um, last time I was able to fly without that saying okay, so I'm going to assume that that's just gonna be okay. And um, speed limit bugs, I, that's already okay. Fuel flow bugs will be fine. Uh, I mean we can go up to the front panel to take a look at those. Uh, we already have markings on the speedometer as you can see, a red, yellow, and green. You can move that bug, but it's not required. And the fuel flow is right here. And so we could tweak a bug. Oops. To set some sort of standard, but we're just going to go with it for now. Okay, so clock. Well, it's uh, 12 minutes elapsed time. Load sheet checked. Um, it seems like we had enough fuel for our intended thing. This is still in the works though, but 4,000 nautical miles will be fine. Mind you, there is a uh, maximum mass for landing, and I think I'm trying to figure out which whoa, which page we can see that in status. You can see we're currently too heavy for landing, but maybe we should top it off and see. I don't know. I think it'll be all right. <laughs> well, if I fall on the Atlantic, it'll be interesting. Well, this range estimate doesn't jive with the other range estimate. This says 2,784. All right, maybe I'll top it off. So let's just uh, increase the fuel to however much we can carry here. Uh, not that much. All right, we'll go with that. And let's see how that is. Apply changes. And what does it tell me now about our range? Well, it says we're over the maximum takeoff weight actually in here, but the range has changed to 3,374. Let's uh, take off a little bit of the tonnage. You can see uh, this, this number is a little bit weird, unavoidably. Status. <laughs> That's a little bit more than I wanted to take off, but all right, all right, 3,208 nautical miles. What did it say about the... It's close. <laughs> it's gonna be... Uh, we'll have some suspense. It'll be fine. All right, um, I don't need to ask anybody for clearance, and uh, door lights I'm sure are fine. Well, I mean, they're actually back on the engineer panel. I think I remember where they were. Um, it's not down there. I, I, I think the, this is the door lights right here. And so if any of the doors were open, those would turn on. Master warning. Um, let's see. Light test. Oh, let's get all of them. Yeah, okay. That sounds like a master warning to me. Okay, anti-collision, I already turn on, uh, throttles are idle, engine feed pumps, that we need, that's the engineer panel again.
Okay, fuel management here. And... Yeah, here we go. On, 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 on. On, on, up. On, okay. We've got a bleed air source from our ground supply. Uh, cross bleed. I believe that's these valves, but let me double check. Okay, yeah, cross bleed. Open, 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 open. Valves. Okay, um, engine off for more than four hours. I'm going to assume that the engine has been off for more than four hours, so I'm going to keep that to normal. Uh, I don't know what Debo means. But uh, apparently it is something that you have to do if uh, you haven't had it off for a long time. And I'll just point out that switch is over here. Engine Debo. So we've got them all on normal, otherwise we'd have to flick them down. Okay. Start valve. Now we're talking. So we're going to start the engines uh, inside first and outside. And let me just take a look and see what it suggests as the preferred order. Uh, it's either 2314 or 3214. I'm going to go 2314. And I'm going to start them all on the ramp. I, I tried before starting just two on the ramp and that worked as well. So that's not a problem. The start switches are here. And I'm just going to go ahead and click to start. It always goes to relight first and then start. So it should be starting and we can see that from here. I don't have to move my camera. Engine 2 is building up on the N1 and N2 RPM there. And uh, once the N2 RPM is above 12 uh, we uh, hit the HP valve, which is here, and so that's open now. Uh, what that does is that just uh, feeds propellant into the engine. And now you see the fire light is on for this, and if that stays on when N2 is beyond 30%, that will be a problem. <laughs> that might mean that the thing is on fire, apparently. So that's the, the thing that's glowing is the emergency shutdown handle and it is safely off before N2 got to 30% so we are happy. And then once the engine is up to 67% on N2 we'll start the next one. And I'll only shut off the bleed air. Uh, when all of them are started. Okay, I heard the click of the starter being reset to its previous position, so engine 3. Okay, we can feed, feed fuel into engine 3. So far only engine 2 is visibly on. That doesn't sound very good though. Wait, oh, it got a puff. Okay. It's it's puffing smoke now. Alright. So that started. Okay, I could probably reach the switches from here. So let's do engine one. Interesting startup sound. Okay, that is looking good. And now, last but not least, engine 4. In a way, the startup sequence is simpler because there's no APU. You don't have to start that and stop that. Note our uh, fuel contents ticking down like a kilogram per second already. 
Okay. Well, uh, we can inform ground that we don't need the power anymore. And the air. So. Okay, that's off. Okay, well, I guess we'll just continue with this uh, conditioning valve on. There. Hydraulic pumps. Hold on, I think we can shut off all the... All the air bleed. Well, it says hydraulic pumps first and then electric generators. Okay, let me get this in order now. Okay, so the... Hydraulic management is up there. On, on, on. On. And then electric generators. Blow it right here. And that's, I guess they always flick to test first. Okay, those are on, and now we can shut the engine bleed valves. It's gonna do all of them. So up here, emergency hydraulic gen, uh, ground bypass, it's already set to that, it looks like. The galley stuff I accidentally flicked on earlier. SSB switch is closed. Alright, that seems to be alright. Taxi lights on. The ground equipment is already clear, and now we get to do pushback. Um, I'm going to lower the visor now. I don't know if that's going to get in the way of... Um, of the pushback truck. We're going to use better pushback for this. Okay, there's a lot of swirly things, but I think... Basically what we want is something along these lines will do. Or, are we supposed to... Pretty sure this way is better. Um, hopefully, hopefully this is right. Okay. And Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Alright, start pushback. So, I mean, this has already been a long startup, but I'm not going to be showing the entire flight. I'll just, uh, once that we take off, since it's just Atlantic Ocean for the most part, I'll give you status updates okay. and then all doors and hatches are closed. And then we'll Ready hit the landing now. when we get there. Oh, there's a there's a bunch of trucks right behind me. There's a bunch of trucks right behind me. Uh oh. Hope they don't get in my way. That's always awkward. Oh, they right, they cleared. Oops. Trying to get a good camera view here. I need to learn how to use X camera. I have it. I have X camera, but don't use it nearly enough. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Okay. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Okay. Engine anti ice off, they want. They're all off. So, engine. Idle switch low. That is here. Engine idle switch low. Ground idle. Okay. Brake fans. Brake fans are on. Engine control schedule. Flyover. I think it's already on there or. Well, that's as far left as it seems to go. Okay, we've got the engine feed pumps definitely. Hydraulic seam check. Yes, disconnect, please. There are no flags. There are no warning lights. CG fuel transfer. Now, this is a particular setting in here. Flight engineer, 
trim for takeoff. Tail is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand so signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. So this actually... Um, I, I'm seeing two of my engines seeming to get turned off here. Wait, things are not going well. I, I, I want to trim for takeoff. I didn't say shut down, did I? Well, I think my engineer just shut down the engines. I could have the flight engineer start it, but... I trim for takeoff into I, I didn't mean to click engine shutdown maybe I accidentally did that engine start I already did it once okay it sounds like the engineer is starting up the engines well that was his, his fault uh, shutting them down in the first place so we will uh, let the engineer do that so if you want to see an auto startup it'll do it as you can see, it's automatically starting them and flicking those fuel switches and everything. I guess this is good for a demonstration. Anyway, I'll go through the rest of the checklist. Engine auto ignitions on. Engines auto throttle on. They're all on takeoff. They've started again. Those need to be on. Okay. There is a special takeoff limiter. This engine for takeoff N1 limiter has to be set to 88%. So we have done that. Sorry about the flickering. I think that's the clouds are causing weird lighting issues. We will quickly go above the clouds and that will no longer be a problem. Interesting effect on the tail there. Not too sure it is a valid takeoff direction on this runway or anything like that, but um, I'm a Concorde. I will take off where I want to take off. Yeah, rendering options set too high. Probably. I'm sorry, I come from old school flight sims where we, we got, you know, maybe 5-10 frames per second, so... All right, let's do this thing. Uh, check the cockpit briefly, but I'll mainly take it from outside, I think. Let me just get the uh, windshield de ice. I always forget to do that. Okay, here we go. Like I said, we'll have burners on. It's a cloudy day in New York, so we're not going to do much sightseeing anyway. I think I was a bit premature. Ooh, quite. Wow. Good thing we have that little uh, wheel on the tail to stop the tail from hitting. Probably not a good idea to have pitched up like that though. Okay, noise mitigation. You can't really see Manhattan right now. I think it's the clouds. Our uh, max viewing distance, I think, is the visibility is like 10 nautical miles only. And clouds. Okay, well. Clouds on, clouds off. Actually, the Concorde manifestly looks better in the company of clouds, actually. Okay. 
All right, we are clear of those clouds, but still pointing up dramatically. Maybe we can mitigate that a little bit. I'm sure there is a more efficient climb. I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. So let's see what it looks like in here. Fuel flow, uh, the last digit is in the tens, the tenth place, so I think it's uh, 10.1 kilograms per hour, uh, sorry, 10.1 thousand or 10,100 kilograms per hour each engine. And uh, you can see we've got 80,000 kilograms, so right now we've only got two hours worth of duration, which is definitely not enough. Well, especially at this speed, but even going uh, high speed, that would not be good. We need to get higher up and faster as soon as possible. Now, uh, which airport is that? Republic Airport. The inner side looks particularly nice. Uh, I would really, really like to be able to go faster <laughs> right now. Yeah, the shading eye right now is really good. Not so much at this angle, but that angle I like. Let's see. Oh, that's classic. Definitely classic looking. That's a nice one. That could be a photograph. A lot of it. That, that's actually a very nice uh, sort of 70s photograph right there. It could be. The blue hue is sort of of that period. Nice clouds though. I don't mind staying at lower altitude for the clouds. So the thing to remember about the Concorde is uh, you can't really push it past the speed of sound until you get to a decent altitude. And that's basically close to 40,000 feet, maybe 35,000 feet or above. So I'm carefully trying to nudge it closer and closer to there. I mean, we're already flying at airline, regular airliner speeds, but... I don't really think there's any angle where it doesn't look good, <laughs> but anyway, I might be biased. We can see the last bit of Long Island there. At least fuel consumption is nice and lower at this altitude, uh, 4.3 per engine. Yet another reason why you won't want to ignite the afterburners at lower levels. But let's see what the UI says is our range right now. It's not going to be good. Status. 2,778 nautical miles. Not good enough. Now I think it's uh, allowing for some reserves, but still. Well, we're at Mach 0.94. Maybe I should just push it on and get over with. We're at 33,000 feet. Alright, um, I'm gonna light the afterburners. You can see the fuel consumption go up tremendously from 4.4 .4 to let's see where it ends up. It's like quadrupling. 14 it's at right now. Not quite quadrupling but still. You do not want those on for any extended period of time. <laughs> Uh, point nine seven. It might be too early. I might have been too early. Point uh, Mach one. But we have to go through the whole transonic region, and we've just hit transonic drag. That's why we started going down there. Gotta be careful with it. Just sort of nudge it along. Once we're past Mach one point three, we will be through. But we do have to keep going up because we're hitting close to that the Mach over speed. We're climbing. 
We need to climb at a rate that does not bring that Mach number down significantly. Speed, the indicated airspeed can go down, but the Mach number shouldn't. I'm gonna get the all pot ready. I'm gonna have it hold. I'm not gonna cross the entire Atlantic trying to trim this manually. That would be a pain in the rear end. I'm gonna have it go to 57,000 feet. Actually, 55. I think it normally did 55. And then drifted up, but still. 57 might be a little bit more fuel efficient. Oh, we're going uh, down in the Mach number. Okay, down, down, down. Mm -hmm. 40,000 feet. 40,000 feet is probably where we ought to break Mach 1. <laughs> but anyway, we got here. It's okay. I'm only going to use the altitude hold on the autopilot. You can see at 40,000 feet, the Mach limit is much higher. Oh, I I don't know if I want to tell the flight engineer to retrim the tanks for crews, but probably ought to. Last time I told the flight engineer to trim the tanks, though, the engine shut off. You see how much drag is involved in the transonic region, it being so reluctant to increase its Mach number at all. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the chrono, I think, uh, resets itself to how long we've been on afterburner. And so I think it's saying that we've been on afterburner for four minutes there. Now, yeah, so Mach 1.3 is where we're past the transonic region now. And we will accelerate very smoothly. We can go up now. I'm gonna trim for flight. flight. Alright. Afterburner off. Let me see if that clock... Uh, the clock is ho holding at 4 minutes and 28 seconds. That's how long we had the afterburner on. Okay, we better check inside. It seems like we're going pretty fast now. 1.76 mark. Let's keep going up. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Climbing! <laughs> I should stop reaching the Mach over speed, but I keep looking outside. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, it doesn't give the Mach number up with the other speeds. It's got indicator speed, estimated airspeed, true airspeed, ground speed, and the miles per hour. But there's one slot there where it could dump the Mach number, but no. I think that as long as we're over Mach 1.5, we should be able to accelerate to Mach 2 without any problems. Once we level out, of course. Again, there was a click that I don't know what it was. It definitely happened. Am oh, you know what it was? I bet it's the engineer doing the fuel trimming. And the clicks are actually the shift in the pumps in the back there. I think that's what that is. Well, we're looking pretty good. Um, it's 5.5 .5 per tank. That's um, 22 altogether. Uh, by my count, I mean, of course, not accounting for the the reserves. We've got three hours of fuel. Okay. Uh, altitude hold and autopilot. It'll wiggle around a little bit, but eventually it'll settle down to 55,000, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't give it too much work to do. Okay, I think uh, I think it doesn't like that. Hold on. I'll bring it up to 55,000 first. Well, let's see what its prediction says now. 2,545 nautical miles. 
Okay, so uh, time for a status report. We are halfway across the Atlantic, or thereabouts. The Atlantic is big and it's sort of vague. But, um, yep, we are at Mach 2.02. .02. We currently have 42,000 kilograms of fuel remaining. Uh, each engine is consuming about 5,000 per hour. So we're talking about two hours. Uh, not reserving a whole lot there though, uh, but I believe we should be getting in with plenty of fuel to spare and Yeah, no apparent problems. The altitude hold has been working well uh, I don't use autopilot a whole lot in flight simulators because I sort of feel like the deal is to fly it yourself But anyway, I should probably learn more about that um, the only uh, issue right now is that we're probably going to end up landing at Heathrow uh, in the dark. I don't know. Uh, right now we're a little bit further north. You know how the flight paths arc north. So maybe the sunset up here is a little bit earlier than down at London, but it might be quite dark once we get there, unfortunately. On the bright side, that means... on the bright side. Uh, it does mean that we'll get to see what the Concorde cockpit looks like in the dark. Interesting, in the, in the darker light, we can see more detail on the skin that makes it look quite, uh, quite a bit less perfect than without the shadows. Very interesting. There are ripples on the skin. And the moon. That That's probably a good view. Alright, I'll uh, talk to you again once we get to Ireland or Britain, whichever we hit first. Okay, well it's really really dark, but we are passing over Ireland. You can see various cities. There, um, we just passed Coot Hill, and there's Shercock over to the right. Um, we're fairly north of Dublin, and we'll be whoops over the Irish Sea pretty soon. We're still going full speed here. We're going Mach 2.02. .02. Uh, we still got 26,000 kilograms of fuel. We're consuming slightly less than we were before because we're lighter and yeah basically that's the situation. Don't know exactly when I strictly speaking need to start descending with this uh, but probably around Birmingham <laughs> I'll take a look at it. Uh, that'll be a good distance to London. Other than that, this is how the cockpit looks in the dark. Pretty well lit. No problems reading anything. Okay, we have acquired East Midlands information, unfortunately. Uh, I'll just leave that be, but we're passing by Birmingham. And I'm gonna start descending. Unfortunately, the night textures seem to load in chunks that are insufficient at this altitude, shall we say. Definitely insufficient. Okay, so I'm gonna begin the scent, and so I'm gonna take it off of altitude hold. I'll leave the... actually I'll take it off of autopilot altogether. 2979. Well, we'll assume that that's how it is at our destination as well. Apparently, I can't get 979. Um, I can get nine, uh, 978. I guess we'll have to go with that. So, past Birmingham, and we still have 23,000 kilograms, so we had some substantial range and reserves left over. Uh, well, my in-game map seems to have gotten messed up. 
Let me see if uh, accessing it through this special method helps. Nope. This map is stuck on Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Oh, now the map has reset. That's good. Okay, well, I see Heathrow on the map, so I'm gonna break below Mach 1. <laughs> Probably stayed above Mach 1, strictly speaking, a little bit longer than I ought to. But, you know, I'm in a rush. And there we go. We are subsonic again. Concord, a mere silhouette in the dark. Well, I can't see anything outside now. Is that because there's some intense clouds? Or has something else gone wrong? Is something eating all the cities? Oh, suddenly the cities appear. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Oops. Hey, that, oh, that's on the... I've been looking at the Mach number the whole time. I missed that my indicator speed went over. So over to our left over there is London. And it's probably creating immense lag. That's the trouble. Um, everywhere that the Concord went, it was a big city, so... It will be lag, because I've got decent scenery around here. Oh, suddenly I see clouds. Don't see... Oop, don't see the ground yet. But at least now I know there were clouds in the way. Okay. Well, hopefully I can lose enough altitude before we get to Heathrow, otherwise I'm gonna have to just fly over it and come around again. Uh, we're turning towards it. Okay, we can see Heathrow in front of us and there is lag. I'm gonna drop the visor. Not drop the nose yet, just drop the visor. At these speeds, it should be all right. Much better. Well, somewhere in those lights is a runway. Gonna drop the nose now. Only a bit to five degrees. Hmm. Thought it would help the visibility a little bit more than that. Okay. Okay, I see the runway. Good times. Good. Wrong fuel trim. Should I change it? Oh yes, fuel tr fuel trim. Uh, wish I could mention that. Okay, trim for landing. Fuel trim to landing. Well, glad for the reminder. Seems like we're too low. It says uh, at least the poppy lights say that. Okay, now we're about right. Ah, uh, the lag is serious. I'm uh, not entirely sure what the plane can take at, uh... 300. With this... Fuel load. We're low. Okay. Oh, we're way off. How did we get here? Ah, uh, lag. Feet. Feet. Oh, 
God, it's tough to land it like this. One hundred feet. Retract. Reverser retracted. Yeah, I wasn't intending to do the reverser. I was intending to idle. Oh. Reverse deployed. Retard. Ten. Retard. Contact. I thought we had contacted a few times before. Oh, that was a horrible thing. I don't even want to know what that looked like from outside. Okay, we have arrived at Heathrow, but I need a lot more landing practice, probably at places that don't have this much stutteriness. Maybe, you know, Edwards Air Force Base or something. There's not a whole lot around there, and it's pretty good for for high speed testing. Uh, anyway, we have arrived. It's been a long flight. It's pretty late at night for me. And I can barely see the taxiways, so I'm gonna put on the brake here and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.